Hey everyone, it's good to be with you today. My name is Miss Maggie and I have a new story that I'd like to read to you called Sky Color. And in this story, there's a little girl named Marisol and she is working together with her classmates to draw a mural and she is in charge of drawing the sky. So she has a really important job and I have some things in my story stretcher bag that I wanted to share with you that help me when I am looking at the sky. So let's see what I have. First thing that I have is a pair of binoculars. And binoculars are a type of glasses that you can use to help you see things that are far away. They're like little telescopes for your eyes. So you put them up to your eyes like this and you can look out and you can see things that are really far away and they look very close up. So binoculars are great if you wanted to go hiking or go looking for birds or doing something outside during the day to help you to see things that are far away. The other thing that I have to share with you can't fit in my story stretcher bag, but it is another thing that you can use to help you see and it is a telescope. So a telescope is something that can help you to see the sky, but it is used for um, viewing things at nighttime. And a telescope is another type of glasses that you can use to see things that are really far away. But a telescope is used more for seeing things like maybe the moon or the stars that are in the sky. So you would use a telescope at nighttime and you can put your eye up to the glasses that are here. And when you peer in and you have it pointing up you can see things that are really far away. So binoculars and telescopes are two different tools that you can use to help you see things that are far away that are in the sky. Today, I wanted to take a look at some things that you might find in the sky during the daytime and some things that you might find in the sky at nighttime and sort those ideas. And I wanted to show you something. This is called a Venn diagram. And a Venn diagram is two circles that overlap. And you can put your ideas or things that you want to sort into your circles. So we're going to work on this together today, where this part of the circle we're going to put all of the things that you might find during the day in the sky in this part of the circle and all of the things that you might find in the nighttime sky on this part of the circle. And this part right here where the two circles overlap is going to be where we would put things that you might see during the day and during the nighttime in the sky. So let's take a closer look so we can work on this together. Okay, so here's a closer up picture of our Venn diagram. And Venn diagrams are really great learning tools that you can use all of the time. You can use, um, you know, you can use them with whatever kind of circles that you might have. Maybe you have like two pairs of hula hoops at home, or maybe you just want to take string and you can create two different circles and then you can sort maybe your toys or your clothing or anything around your house and you can choose the rules and then you can sort them. And it's really fun to use Venn diagrams for a different way for learning. So let's take a look. I have a picture and I just printed these off of the internet. I have a picture of some stars. Now, where would you find stars? Would you find stars in the day sky, in the nighttime sky, or could you see stars during the day and during the night in the sky? Think about your answer. Where do you think? Do you think maybe you see stars really only in the nighttime sky? I agree with you. I think you only see stars at nighttime. What about the sunshine? What kind of sky do you see the sun in? Do you see it in the day, in the night, or both in the day and night? I think that you see the sunshine in the day sky. So we have the sun during the day, the stars at night, Let's see, what else do we have here? What about a rainbow? Where do you think that you see a rainbow? Do you see a rainbow during the day? Do you see rainbows at night? Or do you mainly see them both in the day and night? I think that you really only see them when the sun is shining after the rain has come through. So the rainbow is in the day sky only. What about a moon? Where do you see the moon? Do you see it in the day, in the night, or both? I think that 
we see the moon at nighttime in that nighttime sky. What about rain? When do you see rain? Does rain only happen during the day? Does rain only happen at night? Or can it rain during the day? And can it rain at nighttime too? What do you think? I think that the rain can happen both during the day and at nighttime. All you need is some clouds that are filled with water. What about an owl? Where would you see an owl? Would you see an owl flying around in the daytime, in the nighttime, or both day and nighttime? I know that owls are nocturnal, which means they sleep during the day and they go out hunting at night. So I think you're going to see owls in the night sky if they're flying around. So we'll put him over here. What about a kite? When would you see a kite? During the day, at night, or both up in that sky? If you said daytime, you are right. We would see the kites during the day. And I have one more for you. What about an airplane? When do you see airplanes in the sky? Do you only see them in the daytime or only in the nighttime? Or do you sometimes see them in the day and the night? I know that if I go outside when it's dark to look at the moon or to look at the stars, I can sometimes see red or white blinking lights through the sky. And I know that those are airplanes. So airplanes do fly at night and they also see them in the daytime. So we'll put that in the center here. That's an overlapping. The airplane is in the day and the night sky. Great job with that Venn diagram. Now let's read together and see what Marisol decides to do when she is in charge of painting the sky in her class mural. Sky Color by Peter Reynolds. Sky Color. Marisol was an artist. She loved to draw and paint and she even had her very own art gallery. Not all of her art hung in a gallery. Much of it she shared with the world. She painted posters to share ideas she believed in. At school, Marisol was famous for her creative clothes, her box of art supplies, and her belief that everybody was an artist. Yes, Marisol was an artist through and through. So when her teacher told the class they were going to paint a mural for the library, Marisol couldn't wait to begin. A mural is a really big painting that sometimes is put on a wall where you can paint on the wall and cover the whole space. The classroom buzzed with the sound of brainstorming. The students talked and sketched. Together, they made a great big drawing. Then they marched to the library. I'll paint a fish. I'll paint one too. I'll paint the ocean, Marisol shouted. I'll paint the sky. Marisol rummaged through the box of paint, but she could not find any blue. How am I going to make this sky without blue paint? The bell rang. It was time to put their brushes down for the day. As she climbed aboard the bus, Marisol kept wondering. All the way home, she stared out the window. The sun lowered closer to the horizon. Look at all of those beautiful colors of the sunset. Do you notice any blue in the sunset colors? Later at home, Marisol watched day turn into night. Hmm, I see 
yellow and orange and purple and pink. I don't see any blue in that sky. That night, Marisol settled into a deep dream. She drifted through a sky swirling with colors. The colors mixed, making too many to count. I love this illustration. In the morning, Marisol stood waiting for the bus. In the rain, the sky was not blue. She smiled. I think she's getting an idea. At school, Marisol raced to the library. She grabbed a dish and began adding colors. This one, that one. She swirled the brush, making an altogether new color. Marisol then began painting on the wall. A boy asked, what color is that? That, Marisol said, is sky color. Take a look at that beautiful mural that they all work together on. I see all of those fish and stars. They're jumping out of the water and look at that beautiful sky. You don't need any blue for that sky and it still looks beautiful. The end. Now, I don't know about you, but after reading a story like that, all I wanted to do was take out my paintbrush and my watercolor paints, and I wanted to paint pictures the way Marisol did of that beautiful sky that, um, that she did for her mural. So maybe you are just as inspired and you can get out some of your watercolors that you might have at home or crayons or markers or um, anything that you might have and let's see if you can paint a sky and you can use blue if you want to but maybe you're inspired to try and use colors that are not blue because as we saw the sky is not always a blue and there are lots of other colors that you can use now when i use watercolors and i really love just painting and playing around with colors um, you can see that I always really get everything very, very wet. And so you need lots and lots of water on um, your watercolors in order to get them to be bright. You don't want to pour your water on, but you want to get your brush pretty wet and as it's going through. And you can paint your sky in any way. I'm just going to choose some yellows. And then maybe I'll go a little bit darker. Maybe I'll get some of this peach in there because sometimes when the sun is setting, I notice that there's like a peach color. And I make sure that there's lots of paint on my brush because that's how I'm gonna get the color down. Sometimes watercolors can be frustrating because there's not a lot of color that gets down on the paper, but you just need to make sure that your brush has lots of color and you can always put color on top just the way Marisol did. I'm taking a look at this picture and that is inspiring me, but maybe you would be inspired to do the sky in this way with some darker colors, um, or maybe you would be inspired by doing some swirls and some dots and mixing your colors up. So I'm gonna finish this with my lines, and then maybe I'm gonna add something to it at the end. So stick around. And then after you are finished painting your sky, and as you can see, I turned off the video so that I could finish it on my own because sometimes it takes me a really long time to paint. And if it takes you a long time, that's okay. Um, there is no rush, and I really like to try my best to cover as much as the paper as I can. So you can see I colored from the top to the bottom. And then what I did was I drew a picture of Marisol and I um, cut her out on a piece of paper and then I can position her so that she looks like she is just flying through 
her beautiful sky as well. So after you paint your sky picture, if you are inspired, you can draw a picture of yourself. And remember, your picture of yourself is going to not look like this picture right here. And that's okay. Artists do their own work and everybody's looks different. Your person might just be a big circle with eyes and nose and a mouth and maybe some hair. Maybe um, your person has a stick body and that would be okay too. I did a triangle type body, but yours does not have to look like that. Um, what makes it special is that you made it yourself and that you did your best work and every picture should look different. And so if you want, you can either position your um, person to however they want to be. Maybe they're flying through sort of the way Marisol is flying through in this picture. Maybe you just want your person upright because they're just enjoying the sunset um, or the sunrise or the sky or whatever you have. And then if you want, you can glue it down and then you can have your own picture of the sky color as well. I hope that you keep experimenting and playing and learning at home and having a good time and I'll see you again soon.